Hi, this is Lance with HealthySimulation.com. I'm at SIMS, which stands for the Center for Innovative Medical Simulations at San Jose's City College. I'm joined with Chad Lukens from iSimulate, and we're talking about the ALSI. Chad, what is iSimulate's goal? iSimulate's goal is to reduce the impact on your overall program budget while increasing the effectiveness of your program. Okay, fantastic. And so how does ALSI, in terms of a comprehensive software system, help us to do that? Uh, it's a product that's based off the iPad platform. And what it's designed to do is give you that um, top-of-the-line fidelity uh, um, a simulation that you're expecting from most of your manufactured, your mannequin manufacturers, and, and separate it from that mannequin. It's incredibly flexible. We can basically put patient vitals on anything. So whether it be uh, low fidelity or no fidelity mannequins or mannequins out of warranty that no longer work at all, you can use it for standardized patients. You can use it uh, in a hybrid approach where you have a patient who is actually represented by a confederate and acting in, out in the bed uh, or in the scenario itself. I'd say, think even uh, maybe task trainers that you want to connect to a more lifelike or higher fidelity experience as well. Oh, absolutely. Simulation learners uh, look to the patient monitor for a lot of the cues with regards absolutely. to those experiences. So, you know, noticing that the SpO2 drops and those types of uh, moments um, can be provided by utilizing the ALS software without having to uh, make that full investment into to a, a high fidelity mannequin, which also comes with a patient monitor. And you'll get a higher ROI of those mannequins because you'll be able to take the those, those lower mid to mid fidelity mannequins and make them high fidelity. There's another way that you can leverage your investment with the product because it's not just the standard patient monitor, it's an AED and a defibrillator too. So that really expands us, especially for EMS related scenarios, or we could very quickly and easily hook this up to a wall in a more permanent fashion if we were in, say, an in situ situation in a hospital and we wanted to be very mobile and very quick with regards to getting in and getting out for a simulation based experience. And, and the other thing that I ALSI provides is, is uh, not only is it physically smaller than a mannequin, I mean, you're not dragging, you know, there are a lot of programs that are doing in situ programs. You'll have organizations where they have multiple sites and you're dragging mannequins all over the place. I mean, so that, that can be very difficult, uh, especially if you're the tech who has to pull it around. Um, setup time, I mean, you turn it on, connects to the Wi-Fi, and you're running. Uh, no working with pneumatics, making sure that the wireless connect laptop or tablet connects to the mannequin and, 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 these, and these types of uh, the issues that often can happen. Um, and uh, it's very simple and easy to use, so you don't have to be a sim tech to run the, the tablets. Yeah, I was noticing that today when we were playing around with the software that it is uh, very comparable to using any other um, iPad-based or tablet-based software. A lot of sweeps and a lot of touches, uh, the, the, the GUI or, or generated user interface is easy to understand and follow. So, um, And of course, you're right, that, that ability to quickly kind of perhaps utilize these in, uh, in situ. But not only that, but the further op opportunity to pre-program. Absolutely. And unlike um, uh, you know uh, cheap knockoffs that might be just a patient monitor, here you really have the opportunity to not only change um, the vital signs or uh, other specifics uh, demonstrated on the on the patient monitor there on the fly, but you can trend over a, a shorter period of time. Or uh, much uh, um, more importantly, I feel beyond that is to pre-program these scenarios ahead of time so that the utilization of this equipment over time can become really efficient for your program, and you're not always reinventing the wheel every time you want want to engage in these scenarios, but rather uh, providing an opportunity to um, use this software um, for longer periods of time with shorter a learning curve. Absolutely, absolutely. The learning curve is very small with this product. So Chad, I know with ALSI that the cost is actually directly tied to the number of learner engagements that you're providing and not necessarily with regards to those educators. Can you explain that a little bit more? Absolutely. Basically, there's two parts to the program. You have the facilitator's iPad uh, or program, and that's here. That's free of charge on the iTunes store. Download it to as many iPads as you want. The paid license is only attached to the learners, the, the student's iPad, uh, who's actually interacting with the patient monitor. So for example, if you had a program that had 10 uh, facilitators, instead of them trying to go who has the facilitator iPad, if they all have iPads, 
they all can have that software installed, walk in, and start running a program without hunting down and trying to manage the logistics of who's got what piece of equipment. And that also increases the, uh, the ability to afford this because now we're taking advantage of infrastructure in terms of the hardware that's already been invested in. Um, at this time, uh, the, the kit is provided with unlimited updates, so there's no upgrade fee from here on forward. Uh, once you purchase the product, all updates for the life of that product are free. Um, so uh, um, if they add new features to ALSI, those will come with it as well. Fantastic, okay. Uh, so let's take a closer look at ALSI and uh, with uh, some screen captures. What we've done here is we've taken a screen capture of both of the iPads that are sitting in front of Chad and I. So on the left you're going to see the instructor tablet and on the right you're going to see a patient monitor where your learners will be for simulation. So Chad, can you launch us into ALSI? Absolutely. So we're going to choose facilitator mode here, and we're going to choose ALSI welcome. All right. Now, once I hit start scenario, you'll notice on the right, the power button comes on. We're all ready to go. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Okay, great. So we're seeing the patient monitor on the right here. And on the left, I'm seeing a lot of vertical lines that are kind of indicators of maybe uh, where we're at with those specific stats. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah. Each one of those obviously controls the stat on the patient monitor itself. <clears throat> so you notice that the heart rate at 78 is actually up on and you see a waveform. But blood pressure is not on, so we're going to go ahead and turn that on. It highlights light blue when it's on and it's uh, gray when it's off. Okay, fantastic. Now, so we could take and drag and drop these individual um, waypoints with regards to our various statistics, but nothing's going to happen until we push the go now button, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Now we can actually do it immediate change as we just did, but we can also trend over time. If you notice right by the go now button, there's a trend time. So let's set a trend time for 10 seconds and change the heart rate to 107. So if we hit go over 10 seconds, it's going to trend up, orange being where it's going and gray being where it started from. Oh wow, I see. So that's a really visual way to indicate to us uh, how our simulation is progressing uh, in real time. Now, on the upper right-hand corner, I'm seeing this ECG waveform. Is that something we can change from there? Yeah. So we have multiple waveforms available. Here is a few. You have our sinus, cardiac arrest, and so on. And we also have waveforms for our uh, blood pressure and O2 as well. Okay. Now, below that is uh, various options that are also grayed out. Are, what are those, like glucose and CVP? So those are some custom values. Again, you can turn them off and on. They also trend over time and we can add those as part of our initial scenario development phase. I understand. So those are very custom, specific to the scenario and design and development that you're trying to work with, so you could make those anything and have them display specific to that scenario. Right. So they have multiple options uh, to cover almost anything that you could possibly want. Okay. And so touching a little bit more, uh, again, on the instructor tablet, I'm noticing on the left-hand side various uh, uh, sections of or maybe states that are going on. What are these uh, initial screens and, and other ones below it? We call them quick picks. Effectively it's a palette of uh, preset uh, uh, patient vitals um, and you that basically make up what your scenario is. So on the right here, or on the left here you see that we have a 78, 121 over 79 and O2 of 97 um, and the trend is now. So when I click on it it'll happen right now. Uh, below that, you'll see change values over 10 seconds, and it trends over 10 seconds. Um, if we hit that, you see the three stats are trending over 10 seconds. Okay. And those arrows below that mean the other statistics don't change. Right, so we're just changing those v variables that do uh, need to be modified over the trend of 10 seconds, and of course we saw that it took effect right there. Now, uh, all of those can be pre-programmed ahead of time so that we can increase the efficiency of our simulation program without having to reinvent the wheel of every single scenario running again and again. Unlike cheap knockoff uh, patient monitors that only let you do on the fly, I see that as being a real benefit to not only do trend times but pre-program your scenarios with the ALSI software. Absolutely. Okay, now above that I'm noticing that it says AED and DFib. Does that mean that the patient monitor can also do those as well? That's correct. The patient monitor can be both. So let's go ahead and choose press defibrillator button quick pick, which basically sets us up with a shockable rhythm. Here's what the AED looks like, but we're going to use the defib for right now. So we're going to go ahead and turn it on. All right, and here's your standard defib. 
you have your energy level where you can change how many joules. So let's go ahead and charge it at 200 right now. And once it's finished charging, the shock button lights up. Now pay attention to the left hand screen here. Once I hit the shock button, it moves to the next quick pick. Oh, I see. So those two uh, frames or palettes or quick picks, if you will, have now been linked together so that when the learner take action, takes the action of actually shocking the patient, mm -hmm. that it automatically provides them with the next quick pick with regards to what happens in the scenario. Basically, once uh, a specific quick pick is shock enabled, that means once I hit the shock, it'll move to the next frame. Fantastic. So going back to the defib now, I noticed that you were touching the um, iPad over there. Can you um, use that as well with the patient monitor to change the actual control so the students can use it like a real-life patient monitor? Yeah, so your alarms can be set uh, with your upper and lower limits um, as, as well as your non-invasive blood pressure. It can auto-cycle so you can see the timings that are available. All right, so let's go ahead and turn on, uh, I know because that there are sound opportunities available, so let's go ahead and turn on the sound here of the speakers real quick. And, and uh, are there any other sounds that we can play? Yes, the, we do have sound effects available, so let's pull those up right now. <coughs> oh, wow, so you can actually uh, utilize friends. these sounds to be the, the sound, uh, the voice of the patient as well for, for these particular iPads. That's correct. In fact, uh, the, the, uh, the way it works is if you choose the scenario to have a male, you'll have a male voice. If you choose the scenario to be a female, you'll have a female voice. If the age is under 12, it'll be a child's voice. And the other option that you can have is this: you can use Bluetooth speakers and actually have wireless sound for your mannequin or whatever you're using as a patient. Fantastic. Okay, great. So now that we've seen quick picks, can we see a little bit more about how to build quick picks and scenarios in general? Absolutely. So let's go ahead and exit. So let's go to the settings button. And here we have um, our scenarios. So this little arrow button is actually what you do use to make a copy. There's another adult shock copy. And let's go use the pencil button to edit it. Now this is an existing scenario. Of course, you can create a new one, name it whatever you want. So uh, let's go ahead and say it's an adult shock not copy. Here's where you choose your, ma your gender, male, female, or unspecified. Here's where the age matters. Because if you choose under 12, it'll sound like a child. And here's where you choose your custom values. And these are what are available right now. So we can go to Scenario Quick Picks and add and, and remove as we need or modify them here. Right. So we could create a new Quick Pick, or we could use a, a, another pick, Quick Pick and add it. And of course, we can take the quick picks that are here and edit them in, in, in the scenario. So you create your quick picks prior to building the scenario. And then you add them and you can modify them within the scenario itself. Fantastic. That sounds like a lot of uh, opportunity to really use this, this, this system as, as you need it. What are these teaching points that are underneath scenario settings? So teaching points are basically uh, factors that you're going to be looking at through the scenario. Uh, you know, your introduction, what are the key teaching points? the clinical course of action you're expecting, and the events that are happening. And you can identify those as things happen. So this probably helps for those uh, clinical educators in debriefing and as well as maybe simulation coordinators who are setting up these systems uh, for multiple educators to be able to utilize. Mm -hmm. Now one of the things that I did notice was that under scenario settings it looked like we could also email these between one another. Uh, yeah, actually if we go back to the next, uh, we go back here, uh, you'll see the under the Add Scenario button, uh, next to any specific scenario, you'll see an email icon. That basically takes that scenario in all its settings, and you can send it to another iPad. And lastly, I know that uh, iSimulate is an, an Australian-based company, so what do we do for those international uh, orders that don't use the same metric system that they do? So let's go to Manage Terms. Here you see that, for example, let's say you uh, wanted to uh, to uh, fetal heart rate instead of a heart rate. You could just change this to FHR, for example, or whatever the term is. If, they're not, if they use O2 instead of SpO2, again, we can just change that. And of course, in general settings, I believe, is where we can also change between the various types of metrics that we're using for uh, our system. That's correct. 
Here we can change the heart rate, the blood pressure color. These are the colors of the tracers that you're seeing, and your measurement options, Celsius versus Fahrenheit. Fantastic. So I'd say for those of you who are looking to increase the fidelity for those investments that you've already made into your simulation program, whether that be a low or mid fidelity mannequin, a standardized patient, or task trainer, uh, you quickly have the opportunity to maximize a budget uh, and, and dramatically increase the fidelity of your simulation experiences and realism through the added benefit of patient monitors that come with ALSI. I'd also say that any of those uh, simulation users who are looking to launch a pilot program with regards to a simulation based training platform but don't have access to the high fidelity uh, budget uh, necessary for those uh, most realistic mannequins and their systems that are available out there today. ALSI provides an affordable cost-effective way of starting a simulation program and demonstrating the worth and benefit to not only yourself but higher administrators around you and your clinical educators and learners what the effects of increased fidelity with regards to simulation experiences can really bring. If you're looking for more information about ALSI from iSimulate, enter in your details below and you'll be sent a brochure with more specifics as well as a discount for your next purchase.